so find your soul and the world will use it. Uh, welcome everyone to another episode of the Searching for a Meaning podcast with myself, Richard Glover. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, this amazing couple from uh, Charleston, West Virginia, the Little Blue Hearts. Uh, good morning, guys, and uh, thanks so much for jumping on board. How are you? Morning, Richard. You're good. good morning. Great, man. Good talking to you. Yeah, super stoked for you having us, man. This is cool. Yeah, thanks so much for being on. And it's weird that you're getting re- you're in the morning, and I'm slowly starting. You're thinking about breakfast, and I'm starting to think about dinner. And it's uh, <laughs> so uh, you're waking up as I'm falling asleep. So this could go. Uh, this could be a disaster. It could be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so so what's been what's been going on there? Obviously, um, we we met through the uh, Appalachian uh, Folk Festival, which is a live stream event. That, um, it, will this be your third or second? Uh, how many of these events have you put on so far? This will be the third. This will actually be the third and final. Yep. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it's um, for anyone listening who hasn't uh, seen it online, it's, uh, it's on the 20th of June. It's a fantastic, um, it's a live stream festival. Uh, it starts at uh, 12 o'clock American time, which UK, I think, is about 4 p.m. Um, and the lineup's brilliant. You've got Sierra Farrell, Erin uh, Enderlin, and a load of other fantastic acts. Uh, we're fortunate enough to be starting it as well. Um, and each festival has been raising money for different causes. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So the first one, we kind of just uh, left it to the artists because we weren't entirely sure yeah, we who we wanted to support. <laughs> and then we, we, we realized that we don't have to choose one specific organization. Like, we can uh, we can support a different organization each month. The second one, we um, we were supporting the immigrant community, mm-hmm. and then in this one, uh, we will be supporting the recovery community. It's uh, it's this house. It's actually for women in recovery. It's called the Ray of Hope. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's a beautiful man. They do so much for these girls. They help them get a, get clean. Like the the girls have to go to a detox facility first. It has to be at least a seven to twenty eight day detox facility or in or program and then they go to the ray of hope and they could they live there for a year and once they graduate they have been clean for a year and then they help the women find jobs and apartments after that so it's a really cool program man and they're uh they're doing a lot for the recovery and wow is that something that's are they a local organization or do they work nationally across america they are actually an independent organization they uh they, they're local to charleston mm-hmm. i think yeah Oh yeah, they're here. They're, I, I, I think there's only one house though. They don't get any governmental assistance. I know that. Wow. And is is that something that is a big issue uh, specific to Charleston? Um, like, is, <laughs> is is it a rate that's you know that's rising? We've been one of the hardest mm-hmm. hardest hit areas in the country, I think. Yeah. Um, with the the opioid epidemic. Yeah. Yeah, I know firsthand about that. Well, so does she now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it, so with with the fact that it's, it's not a government funded like how did you come on to like how did you find out about these organizations that were these organizations you knew before you had the idea to to put on the festivals the sort of organizations we knew before I, I was familiar with the with the recovery with the ray of hope and then but the the the, the what was the, the community the community response coalition of kentucky um we that, weren't, yeah we're familiar with that one was suggested to us by um, Brad Becker at Red Barn Radio. Yeah, one of our partners in, in putting it on. All right, and what? So, what gave you the idea to you know put on the uh, put on festivals while I've, whilst <coughs> everyone was stuck at home? You just go, oh, let's, let's put it on a music. <coughs> it's like was it like a Wayne's World moment? Or? I swear, uh, literally, yeah. The, the light bulbs blew up, and there were balloons and confetti. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> we're just sitting here with with all our shows getting canceled and and all our friends in the same boat and we're thinking about you know how how can we still stay connected to our audience and and um mm-hmm. keep the music going for people and i think we maybe had done one live stream ourselves one or two or something and then we thought you know we could why not it was his idea let's just make it a festival and go all day and um He's somebody that has an idea and then goes and does it right away. And while I'm sitting, I was like, well, wait, you know, let's think about how to do it. And he's already like, figured it out, getting yeah. it going. So. But I mean, I didn't get it going entirely. But like, there's no way. I mean, she's done. After I got it rolling, she's taking care of like everything. After. 
I just have the tight. idea. He just working. has to push me to 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 jump in, and then <laughs> once she puts her her mind to it, man, it's uh, we can do anything. <laughs> really, it's crazy. Because I think you have that kind of like as soon as you have an idea, you've got like a very short frame of uh, frame of time where it's like either you you pursue that and you've got that motivation and enthusiasm behind you. Exactly. Or it kind of gets locked away in a year's time. It's like, mm-hmm. gosh, yeah, maybe we'll do it this year. And as soon as it becomes yeah. a year, it never gets done. <laughs> right, right. So he's, a, he's always the motivating force in, in doing things like that. I, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a lot more cautious and I, I want to like think about things and figure it all out and he's like you just figure it out as you do it let's just jump in and do it and so he's the one that really that makes things happen <laughs> it's good to have that caution though sometimes i i wish i had a bit more caution before i go to post things on facebook because you <laughs> I, i'm just gonna put this out this is great and then an hour later you've got oh my god why'd i do that oh, why'd i do that yeah, yeah. So it's kind of it's good to have that balance. So it's a it's a good it's a good combo you got there. Um, how have you been finding the the festival so far? Then, like, how have the last two gone? So the first one went. I mean, it went really well. We got a lot of good feedback. We had just about a thousand people uh, going or interested. At the end of it, I think we had what was it, eight hundred and some people went. Something. It's kind of hard to tell because the way we did it with each separate, each artist mm-hmm. being a separate stream. Um, it's hard to tell how many people carried over from to watch all day, how many people tuned in for just one or two of them. But um, but we had good response on that one, and that we were so excited that we're like, let's do it again, let's do it next month mm-hmm. right away. And um, that one blew up. That one, um, for some reason, somehow, it, it blew up exponentially. I mean, it, it, we had like eight, we, we reached two hundred and two thousand people. And, wow. Had close to ten thousand people going or interested, and um, I'm not sure how that one blew <laughs> how that one blew up so much. And now that people are starting to go back, you know, go back, the venues are opening back up, and we're finding other ways to have physical live shows again. We, we just decided that but this will probably be the last one. We have a good lineup. We have you guys opening, man. That's just going to be so cool, and that's going to get people interested, you know, and your guys inside of the music, music, and um, yeah, we, we really be- wanted to um push the boundaries a little bit of what mm-hmm. people thought of as Appalachian folk oh, music. Yeah. So we didn't want to contain it just to people right here um, or just to a very narrow type of music. We wanted to kind of show the the broad reach and the mm, yeah. variety. Right. Well, I mean, and if it wouldn't have been for Pamela, Pamela is like a huge advocate for female artists. She has uh, went out of her way to make sure it was actually her idea to have just as many female artists as male artists. Like, why would we not? You know, why are people not doing that? And when she said it, I was like, that's really, really. And so we decided to alternate as, as much as we could through the lineup, you know, male artists, female artists, or vice versa. So this, this month, you know, we have, we have Sierra Farrell headlining. Mm-hmm. And Erin Enderlin before her is just... She's, she's incredible. She's, yeah. she's a bad butt. <laughs> Did you know these acts before the festival, or was it a case of you having a look at, you know, what acts you want to get and approach them? A little of it, one, a little of the other. Some of them we knew. Well, some of them. I know a lot of people. <laughs> some of them we were just like, you know, it would be really cool. Let's just reach out to Sierra Farrell and see if she'll do it. And uh, she she responded. And sure. She, yeah. Said she would do it. So. That's brilliant. Um, and it's, it's that old uh, tale, you don't ask, you don't get, like you've got to ask for someone to, you've got to knock on the door for the person to answer. If you don't knock, then, you know. Right, they're not, exactly. yeah, they, have, they don't hear, yeah. And uh, so something I've always found with kind of, you know, uh, traditional music is generally, um, you know, the, the fans and the, the demographic are a lot more accepting of, um, you know, female acts than opposed to other genres. Like there's a lot more, you know, there's, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of issues with, um, with gender equality within the music industry. Um, oh my God, man, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> That's exactly what we're trying to help prevent. <clears throat> because you, we have, sorry, I'm gonna start there. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> now, do you find that with um, Appalachian and like folk music in general, it's it's a not so much easier, but generally more accepted for female acts to play than as opposed to um, negative, uh, feedback in like metal music or other genres 
um, I mean, part of the reason we started doing it is, uh, or, or really making a, a real concerted effort is because we would look at festival bills and see that, you know, it was heavily weighted toward male artists and there would be a few female artists here and there, but uh, and I, you know, it's hard to know, is it purposeful? Is that because there are more men who are really, but you know, maybe women aren't um, getting the opportunities and you have to sometimes uh, get an opportunity to be known before you can become known. <laughs> uh, uh, so we just really, I don't know. It, I, I think it's still a challenge for women. Um, to Especially get. in, in, uh, in this area. And, and like every industry, um, it's who you know, and you know, men are friends with other men. And if, the, if a man is putting on the festival, which most of the time they are, they're going to invite their male friends to perform. And so you have to like make a conscious effort to make mm -hmm. sure that you're um, you're looking a little bit beyond your first circle, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, that's it's cool. Meet people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it is very much a case of unfortunately who knowing the right people as opposed to what what you can offer um i know especially like with with our experience uh, as musicians it's you're looking at certain festivals that you think you'd be a good fit for but if you're not in that circle um and this is just in general this is before gender comes into it you know if you're not into you know it's very much kind of like a uh, it's a club and if you're not a member of that club then it's very hard to kind of break in so already it's difficult but then when you add gender on top of that it's uh, it's just that extra barrier that people have to uh, break through just to get your music heard and you know this is before mm -hmm. they listen to it and then uh, there was a thing I, I think it was last year uh, the australian um blues festival they announced oh, um, the kind of headline acts and there wasn't any female acts that they'd announced and like they just uh. got absolutely panned for it rightly so <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yes and this is like the biggest uh, right. this is the biggest blues festival in the country as well and then all of a sudden you know oh a week later we're announcing these acts these acts is like come on guys like <laughs> It's not the uh, it's not the right step to be taken. Right, um, tighten up. Yeah. <laughs> tighten up. But I, th yeah. I think it comes back to a, a discussion I have a lot, which is which is what you guys are doing with this. Is it's like we can't wait for people to make the change for us. If we if we're not happy with something, you know, we can we we can shout all we want about changing it, um, but very rarely does that change happen until we make that conscious effort to do it so by you guys putting on this festival um and making sure that you know female musicians are, have that platform and then hopefully it inspires more people to go you know what i'm putting on a gig or a festival soon i already have a little bit that's brilliant yeah do you have um do you have plans down the line once things open up to put on a a live festival um with it's sort of a that's sort of up in the air right now we've talked about it we've actually went and looked at some land and um, we've been considering it, you know, it's just... Uh, we really like the idea, but we're also very aware of how much work it would yeah. be. And how, like, putting on a festival has kind of taken away a little bit from our own music. Because um, we put a lot of effort into making sure that we promote the artists that are on the festival. And we put a lot of effort into that. And with a live um, in-person festival, I think it would be even more. So we don't, <laughs> we, we don't want to stop doing music ourselves. <laughs> right. So really exactly, yeah. Yeah, summer's coming, and we're happy. We're gonna get some tours booked up, and oh, we're planning. We're planning on being all over the place, man. We're actually working with Kate Weatherford. She was with uh, Oklahoma Reviews for a uh, for a while, and uh, she's a, she became a close friend of families of mine, and she's going to be our booking agent. So we're going to be touring. That's brilliant. So uh, a live gigs going a uh, a live uh, venues opening up again over there now for for music. I think a few are starting to in different places and um, theoretically with restrictions about how many people can be in the venue and I don't know what all. Um, there was one, um, was it last weekend that Arlo and Nolan um, Yeah, Arlo McKinley and uh, Nolan Taylor played at uh, Elks Lodge. In, uh, oh, is that where it was? So yeah, I, someplace in Ohio. I'm, I, I'm not sure which one. I don't know what the restrictions were entirely, but I know they're, you know, they're being cautious about it, but there are people who are trying to get live shows back up. Um, Red Barn is starting to do them without an audience right yeah. now, but they are bringing people back on their stage. 
So um, I think people are just kind of feeling it out in different places. Some people are more anxious to get everybody back together than others. Yeah. And it's, it's a strange time to be a musician because you, we, it's, it's not like with other businesses such as, you know, like shops where you can kind of prepare for, right, shops are opening up again from this date. And, you know, as soon as you open those doors, people are going to like Ikea open <laughs> um, on Sunday and there's five hour queues for Ikea. And it's like, do you oh need to go into Ikea that badly? <laughs> right. And, um, and that's, that's it with, uh, with shops and consumerism. You know, as soon as you click your fingers, people will come back. Whereas music, um, it's very much up in the air because ultimately there's not really much we can do about it as musicians. It's ultimately down to the venues, what they want to do, how they want to operate. And then we've got to wait to, you know, book a gig to be able to book a date and then have enough time to promote it. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's kind of that weird um, kind of middle, I don't know, you're kind of in the twilight zone, kind of not knowing, yeah. not, not knowing where it's heading. <laughs> Um, that's definitely the case over here. I, I know, uh, I know Trump ha doesn't really take things as seriously over there. So uh, I don't know how, what's going to say Trump. Uh, Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, Never heard of him. <laughs> if, only, if only that was the case for everyone. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Truly. Oh my God. So uh, right. are you, are you guys planning on uh, doing some record? Have you been recording during the lockdown or is it all been on the, um, Oh yeah, man. I've written, we've written so many songs and we just recorded our next single, which is hands down the best song I've ever written. We're so excited. We're so that. excited about this song. It's uplifting, man. I mean, that's what we need. About, uh, what is it? It's what we need. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we need. Uplifting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> It's really good. I guess we can release the title. Uh, the title of the track, it's going to be called, uh, this will be the first time anyone really knows what the title of the track's going to be. And, and the title of it is Eyes to the Sky. And it has this really cool groove. And I've just never been more excited for the world to hear a song that, that we have uh, created. Man. It's so that's, special. That's that's what you want, that excitement. Because music, it's, it's such, like I, I was reading an article a, while, a couple of weeks ago and the, the guy who was writing, was like, oh, music's a miracle. And that really, that's kind of stayed with me since reading it because it is, it's just a bunch of sounds and a bunch of words thrown together. The emotion <laughs> and what, what it can actually do, it's, uh, it's pretty special. Um, so it's, it's exciting that, it, and, so it's, and people should be excited about releasing their own music. Whenever I talk about my music, I'm kind of like, yeah, we're recording. We're going to be putting something out. I kind of want to be excited. I like deep down. That's me being excited about it. I was like, oh. I thought, I thought that sounds it, like I. her. It sounds like her. It sounds like she'll stay real monotone. Like, like, I'm like, are you happy right now? Yeah. You just put some songs like, yeah. do you sound happy? Yep. I hope you enjoy yeah. this. I did. And then just a thumbs up. <laughs> So it's, uh, it's it's an angle to work on. <laughs> so um, how how come you have have you thought about putting yourselves on these festivals to play? Or well, we played the first one, and naturally, we would like to be on every one of them. You know, what I mean, we play every show, every show we could, but you know, it just feels a little bit. Yeah, hosting the festival and having yourself on a bill just seems a little self centered. <laughs> <laughs> So we ended up doing a few songs. The I'm going to write song. that down as a note for myself to remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how long have you two been a duo for? Then, like, how how did it how did it start? What gave you that kind of drive to uh, pursue music? Well, we we met um, oh about a year and a half ago, and I was just you know a fan and of his music. And we started spending time together and I was just like, let me help you promote your music and um, help you do that. And I just kind of... I heard her singing in the shower. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> heard her singing in the shower and then uh, not, not long after she was singing on my first EP. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what you're She's never done this before, you know. <laughs> I mean, she had never... And uh, so she... It was, and it was my first record that we had ever recorded. Nice. And uh, so she was on it. She's on it. She actually is in. I think the first time I was on stage with you was either late November or December. 
it might have been right before you released your album or right at um, the day we did the album release, September 1st. Oh, uh, at the Burl. And then we, like, a little bit more, I did a couple more songs with them. Um, and I don't remember, we formed a little Blue Hearts mm -hmm. probably just like three or four months ago. We yeah. decided to make it an official Yeah, it wasn't, thing. it wasn't long, it wasn't long ago. We've already got a few thousand followers, I think. How have you found the process of uh, like being a couple and being musicians together as well? Because uh, I obviously with the uh, Kings and Queens, me and Kalisha are, are, are partners as well. And there's always that kind of you, you're writing a song and then so it either goes really well or you're not speaking to each other for the rest of the night. But yeah, <laughs> I, no, I think we should have another chorus. And it's like, no, no, Richard, we shouldn't. And then. <laughs> And then it's tense. <laughs> That's it. That's it entirely. He's a lot more of a natural musician, and I'm a lot more cerebral, I think. And so most of the stuff, really, he writes it, and then I kind of follow along. And I've just sort of started dipping my toe into trying to write some things. And the writing. She's actually working on, I, I believe it's going to be her first thing. <laughs> She's been, she plays, she plays a bit of piano, and... Um, she wrote this song, man, and it's actually, it's going to be something special. She says that she's working on it. I'm going to sing, I'm going to try to sing the chorus with her, you know what I mean? So I don't want to take away from, especially being her first single, but perhaps like we'll be able to, to market a little bit. I think it'll be really cool to market with her name featuring Walter DeBar this time instead of <laughs> vice versa. <laughs> yeah. so, so is it a lot easier to balance that kind of uh, work and personal life with with the music being the the centerpiece or do they often overlap with each other at times he, he the other thing too i guess that is a factor in our lives is that he's a full-time musician and i'm not i have a day job that i have to go to and then um by the time i get all that done and i'm dinner, drunk on the couch yeah, yeah. dinner and everything else in the evening <laughs> he's, he's played all his music all day long <laughs> And so, like, yeah, by the time she gets home, I'm like, let's just, uh, we'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I it's know. It's really exactly true. He writes most of the music, and I, I join along. Um, it's for, for now. <laughs> for now. She's dipping her, she's getting her feet wet, so we're going to see. I, I have a feeling she's coming. Fantastic. It's, it's, it's funny you say that, because he's similar, he's very similar with me and Kalisha. Like, I, I do music, uh, pretty much full time and uh, Kalisha works full time and like she'll come home and she's like Richard like oh why have you not why have you not done this why have you not done this so I'm like yeah I haven't done this but I did come up with a card and it's like <laughs> not enough <laughs> not enough <laughs> not enough I just I just sat in it's like oh, I need to, I'll, I'll be sat around the house I was like yeah I should really eat I should probably tidy up but just, and then before you know it, it's like, oh crap, I've not done anything. Yeah, it's six in the evening. Like. Yeah. And then it's, but it's um, as, as well, it's, it's hard for, for someone coming home from work to, you know, have, you need that time to unwind. And sometimes the last thing you want to do is start working again on something completely different. So it's, it's kind of, it's, uh, but then at the, the end of the day, full-time musicians isn't always the, uh, the best paying uh, job. So you right. kind of, you do need that kind of sensible head is like, well, you can write a song, but I'm going to make sure that we can eat this week. That's <laughs> exactly. Hands down. I think maybe she has actually said that. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty much the idea. I mean, that's, yeah, it really is. That's and, hilarious that you said that. So what, um, something I'm interested in talking about with people um, and kind of the, one of the aims of this podcast is just find like people how people find that courage to go you know this i i'm doing this for a living but really you know my heart's leading me down this direction this is what i want to do but you know I, and then all of a sudden you start getting that doubt so uh, one of the aims of this podcast is just to find you know what doubts people like yourselves have and how have you managed to overcome that to pursue you know your your passion and something that you you want to make a living from Oh man, music's always been my thing. I just could never sing. I didn't sing. think I could sing. <laughs> I was like, I would be real shy. I was super timid. I didn't want anyone to hear me. I was like, man, they're gonna think this sounds. That's stupid. what the alcohol's for, though. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Trust me, I drink my share of alcohol. <laughs> I'm a drinker. Yeah. Oh, that was water, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, this this is water, though. This yeah. is water. <laughs> I 
was like tears. <laughs> I, I feel I've let you down now. Sorry. <laughs> nah. Not at all, man. I uh, I got in a bunch of trouble growing up, and then actually, actually, I've been in trouble my whole life. My mom, my mother was really into music, but really, where I found it was for my grandmother. And then uh, I used to hear her playing old hymns. And I thought about that the whole, like I got in trouble when I was locked up for a long time, man. And um, I thought about that forever. And the, and I swear it was like a week after I got out of prison, I was at this, I was living in this halfway house with these hippies, man. And they were, they were really cool and they were so sweet. And they, they uh, helped me, they helped me, uh, they just helped me believe in myself, man. And, and, and one of them heard me singing and literally, that's that's how it got started really you know quick little well i think that's it it's very much about that network of people around you and it's that you know it it yeah. although it links back in some ways to what we were talking about earlier is knowing the right people but it's it's not always in a sense of knowing the right people in a professional degree it's more about knowing the right people in terms of people who can get behind you and support you it's very easy especially on on with things like social media to see negativity and to have negative people around you, especially people you grow up with who, you know, you, you throw them, you, you throw them with these people through circumstance of where you were born, not necessarily because you share the same beliefs or mindset. Um, and especially as where something like music's involved in, you, you tell people, oh, I want to be a musician. And all of a sudden you met with oh, really like, you know, it doesn't, <laughs> pay well it's you know it's not it's really hard to make it you know like oh why don't you go on x factor or this and, and it's, <laughs> i think i think the key is making sure that you've got that strong network of people whether it's music or whatever it is you want to do people who support you and um mm -hmm. and it's something i was really lucky to find a huge group of people back in australia who we all had the kind of same mindset and everyone was helping each other and uh, since knowing uh, you guys it's, it's something that i've noticed from you as well you support everyone and you get that support <laughs> in return as well and a lot of people don't realize it as well like you see musicians who are only in it for themselves and it's like you know this this business could be a lot easier if you yeah. let people help you and you help other people as well and that's really what he's all about and and how like i i did when i was younger i loved music and i sang in the choir in school and but i i had like zero confidence about my ability to do anything and and i never you know i always loved it and there's that that tiny little piece of you that imagines like what would it be like to be on a stage but i, I never ever ever thought that that was a thing i would do and he just was like you can do it and, and push me out there and it's not just me i mean he he is the most enthusiastic supporter of anybody and everybody that he comes across that he thinks has even like the remotest amount of, well, I won't say that, I won't say like, <laughs> but anybody that he thinks is talented um, or, or that is good people and, and he just wants to support everybody and love everybody. And, um, I just think that's what it's about. Exactly yeah. what you said, man, this business could be a whole lot easier if we all just help each other out. Yeah, and that's, and back to the festival that's a lot of what this mm -hmm. is we're, we're like you know let's let's let people know about these really great artists that maybe they don't know about and and we thought if we, we put them all together some that people know and some that they don't know that you know it would it would help everybody out right it gives them a bigger audience you know a broader audience and it just builds up that sense of community as well especially in a time where everyone's isolated and stuck in their own home putting on something like this where you've got you know um 10 or so acts from all over the world coming together to do this one thing and all these people tuning in from everywhere like it does it it does uh, give you that sense of community which we've kind of lost over the last couple of months um especially during the lockdown um which I, th I think that's the great thing about music and i think that's why it's you look at all the big kind of social and civil movements that have happened music's always played a center part to any change that's happened you know from woody guthrie to aretha aretha franklin and uh, you know the list goes on there's a reason music's always at the center of change exactly exactly man. i agree entirely um so what kind of when kind of looking forward um one th one thing I've, I've been thinking about is I, I really believe that we're at a point in history where if we want to kind of change things, this is the perfect 
time to do it. Like the world's kind of shut down for the last couple of months. We're kind of looking ahead to reopening it all. Um, and with these riots and protests really highlighting a lot of issues that we have, um, do you think that there's a way that we can kind of bring this idea that we have when we're putting on music festivals and gigs to bring people together, like how we kind of bring that, take that a step further and really kind of educate people and inspire people to change themselves? That's a really good question. And I don't know if we have really... I don't have many, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really... <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know if we've thought about it in such concrete terms or as far as, I mean, you know, we, we want to do well. We want to spread love and, and, and bring people together. Um, and we hope that that's something that... And like we talked before about bringing more awareness to different um, female artists or um, other artists who are really good and haven't yet managed to find their way to the audience. Or, you know, like as, as we've all talked about there, they, they maybe they weren't part of this, you know, these circles that only allow, you know, their friends, <laughs> family or people they've known for 867 years to like even have a drink with them. We're just trying to, we're just trying to make this life easier, man. <laughs> All we want to do is play music, hug the shit out of everyone we <laughs> see, and um, just we just want to spread love. I don't know I what think, else to do with it. Yeah, there's a lot of people who could probably benefit from just one big kind of hug. Um, I think that might, like, that's simply how you change things. You just give give someone a hug. That's then, it. I swear it is. That's just, it, man. Just, just let them know it's okay. Uh, the another thing with it kind of links back to what we were talking about at the very beginning with Appalachian music in general like how how such a small kind of specific genre in terms of its origins and where it came from such a small part of the world now pretty much every genre gets its influence from that early music well, man, yeah. and it's, just, it's strange how you know every pocket of the world kind of Hacks back some way to that traditional music. Um, what what was how what was your experience in terms of getting finding this genre and you know like becoming attached to it? Of the Appalachian deal, honestly, man, growing up, I think we've both like been in and out of it over our lifetimes. Like here, you, I think for both of us, maybe our first real music experience was in the church in the. Hymns and the yeah. things that people. Um, My grandmother playing hymns and you being in the church. And and there's a real strong culture of that here of, of um, people doing that kind of music. And then, um, as far as live music for me, I remember going to a like just a, a pig roast and people were playing music there. Or going to like we have a an event called the Vandalia Gathering here, which is. Um, like a old time, most of the mu it's music and dance festival, I think mostly. Um, it's over um, the last weekend in May, usually every year. Um, and, and so we grow up with that kind of music. Um, and then as all kids do, we explore the other music that comes in on the radio or that we find in different places. And, but I was introduced to good music at an early age. I was like 16 and I had some really cool friends that traveled that were into the indie rock scene and I turned 18 and they moved me to Greensboro, North Carolina, man, where I fell in love with the indie rock scene and I was 17, you know, I was, I was, I just turned 18 when I moved there and I wasn't even allowed in the bars, but they were like getting me into the bars and my best friend like owned this bookstore and he's like this indie rock king who, uh, Shane Strait, he's one of my best friends, God rest his soul, man, if there's one up there to rest with. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we, we explored different things, mm -hmm. but you kind of always somehow you always come back home. I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't. I can't say gone for long. I always move back every time, man. So that's kind of the same aspect with the music, you know. We go explore other other genres, but inevitably, I'm always coming back to the to the folk, the indie folky sort of deal, man. Yeah, I think that's that's something I always find pretty envious about the states is how kind of open and proud they are of their traditional music and how you um and that kind of progression from you know the early folk music into blues into you know rock and what we have today whereas the uk is kind of 
there is a growing scene for folk music, but it's not as kind of like a national icon as it is over in America. So uh, I always get very jealous of you guys over there when- Oh, you know, come visit, man. We have an extra bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think once the uh, the NSA look at my Facebook history, they probably won't be letting me in anything. <laughs> well, I'd love to take we you up on that offer. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, we 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 talked about it briefly before we went on the uh, before we went on the air, but obviously everything that's going on at the moment um, in America, like how have you guys been finding it? Um, you did mention it's been fairly quiet in Charleston at the moment is it does it feel like it's something that's eventually going to to the protests are going to hit you guys or is it going to is it pretty they're doing, um, they've been doing some protests here as well they're not as uh they're small generally smaller here. <laughs> yeah and and there really is um the population here is different than it is in other we're pretty um um not a very diverse area I'll put it that way in um, other parts of the country, I think that have a lot more diversity. Um, they, it, it's a lot more prevalent just by sheer numbers of the issues that people are, are facing. Um, not to say there aren't issues here, because there are a lot of issues here. There are, yeah. This uh, I grew up in uh, in West Virginia, man, in uh, an entirely white family, having the last name Coon. <laughs> <laughs> Being the only black kid in school, you know, there there, there was there was one other kid, um, and man, you know, I, I was uh, I remember being like seven or eight and getting on the school bus, and I would always be nervous because if this kid was on the bus, then him and his buddies would be, you know, I would get I would hide in the back in the seat by myself, and they would kind of get in the seat in front of me and face turn around and face me, and uh, they beat me up a couple times, and that was just the first my first experience with true racism and then i started learning how to see it in people's eyes and um i st- I, I quickly learned that if i was a uh, overly friendly initially when i met someone that uh, it was a little more difficult for them to be uh dicks <laughs> so it i started take, um takes them off guard yeah yeah it kind of does but i'm really i think um Instead of us just trying to force people into, uh, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think us trying to like make people understand is gonna work. I think we just gotta try and. Um, oh, what I do, man. Like, I'll just go. Into, I've never told anyone this, so I'll go ahead and do it right now. Like, my stepdad's parents, my grandparents, were racist. They were really racist, but when he brought me there. It couldn't be so like and I was just an I was one when he came into my life my stepfather and um so I was changing lives at one year old and I had no idea I didn't realize it until just recently that I was I was helping I was helping them realize some things you know that um I don't know how to explain it that's but all right. I think well, thank you very much for sharing. So often. Yeah, man. It's yeah. just one person at a time. Yeah. Just yeah. you know. And and I don't I don't know how to do it any other way other than to just work individually and you know, try and teach my kid right and, and try and teach other kids when you have the opportunity and um I don't know. That's it, man. We just gotta kill them with kindness. Yeah. Just keep on loving. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what else to do. Well, I think it's it's it comes down to what what you mentioned, you know, like raise making sure that you're raising your kids to to be aware of these, and it does come down to education. Like I I grew up and I'm back here at the moment, just a standard northwest town where industry was, you know, the big thing, and then they had the boom, and then that's died down. And so already you've got a lot of frustrated people who they perceive the world a lot differently to how everyone else does, and then you throw in, um, you know. Uh, that kind of fear of the unknown when when uh, immigrants come come in and there's never any education there to, to for acceptance kids are going to school without learning about these kind of cultures and you know yeah. racial acceptance and then you turn on the news and it's always you know if propagandas uh, 
other racism is the, the easiest thing to flare up in someone because it's that fear of that kind of almost primal fear of someone who's different to you someone from this different place yeah. all of a sudden there's that kind of primal urge to to fear them and um yeah so it, it does come down to education and um you know you i can certainly see why you know these protests are happening but unfortunately you've got a guy at the top who's just not interested in listening so it's uh <laughs> It's really hard to kind of see where you kind of go from there because ultimately I I can only see one or two things happening. Either suddenly Trump has this massive reawakening where he goes, hang on a minute, like I'm a massive dick. Like, you know, there's a re- <laughs> so many people hate me. Maybe I should actually reflect and look at what I'm doing. And this is <laughs> going to be that constant battle where, you know, one side shouting another thing and the other side's just trying to shout louder instead of we need to listen to each other we need to listen why these people feel this certain way so we can educate them and but it's it's easy for me to say that because I don't have to worry about any kind of racism but I think from the from from the, the racist people I know are racist through ignorance and through lack of education not and it's very rarely through any kind That's of it. reason and um and hopefully you know i Hopefully music can be something that can change that. You know, it's always at the front of uh, social change. And uh, who knows? It's it's definitely an interesting time to be alive at the moment. It really is, isn't it? I, sw- I, I was thinking that. I was thinking that the other day. I was like, man, this is just. It's crazy to know that you're in the middle of something really historical. But that your, could, yeah. your kids and grandkids or your grandkids are going to read about in their history books. And that. I'm just interested to see if anything at all changes, you know, yeah. I don't, I think, uh, I don't think um, the world's going to give it a choice. I think it's either going to happen or it's just going to, I think it might turn, it might, it might get bad if it doesn't, you know? Well, they're already saying in China that uh, air pollution is already getting back to, because they've opened up now, air pollution is getting back to the rates that it was pre-lockdown um, which is sad mm-hmm. because it kind of shows that that's the direction governments are going to be taking you know they wow. don't really have interest in changing making things better they just want to go back to how it was before where they were you know making making money and it's just like and that's that's kind of sad because uh, you know as we said this is the per- if we want to change things this is the perfect time and um, yep. so that's why we've got to just grasp it ourselves I think and start the revolution of uh I'm so about it. There's, I'm so about when it. you say, let's go back to the way things were before. And, and I think that's for a lot of people. That's really, that's feel safe to, I already know the, this way and I want to, that f- way feels safe to me. And I think that's the impetus for, for racism, for a lot of racism and a lot of, um, you know, everything else, because people t- who, um, anything that's different, any new way of doing things terrified of change yeah yeah everyone's terrified a little bit somewhat scared afraid of change i've learned to uh, embrace it because i've had to mm-hmm. had to deal with a lot of a lot of change really quickly and had no choice <laughs> but otherwise you have to you know well that's it you were pushed into it and i mm-hmm. think that we're and we just have to figure out how to push it and make it happen because otherwise it's not going to it's just going to keep getting worse. Do you think these protests can push people into change? I don't know. I think I think they do. I think I think uh, not only do they help push people to change, but they also they all you know there uh, are people watching from the sides, man, that are seeing what's what's happening. And it's helping bring awareness. I think, man, it's helping bring awareness. It's, I believe in protesting, man. Like as long as they're peaceful, no one's getting hurt, and people are just really trying. Like they believe in what they're doing. Like. I say do the damn thing, man. I'm behind him 100 all the way. Yeah. I think it really is this time more than any other times I've seen people get worked up about it. I think people are really starting to examine themselves and, um, and look at the issues and say, you know what, maybe, maybe there really is a, maybe they really do have a point. (laughs) Yeah, but, that's that's uh, that's beautiful and it's hopefully that you know if enough people can kind of see that and reflect and look inwards instead of kind of turning to i think it's like human instinct to point the finger first as opposed to going you know well maybe i'm antagonizing this somehow so hope you know we we definitely need that reflection that stop to 
you know, look at look in the mirror and uh, just you know, see is this the person? Is this what I want to be putting out? Do I want to yeah. be putting out anger and hatred towards people? Because it's because uh, it's only going to end one way, and I think it's uh, it's it's kind of. I don't think ironic, but I think it's almost poetic that a lot of these protests are happening the same on the anniversary of like the the Normandy landings, you know, that those people were landing on the beaches to fight fascism and on the <laughs> anniversary of those, we, yes, again, people are rising up and fighting against a, a fascist. History system. will repeat itself. It's, it's weird <laughs> how it's almost, you know, t- it's to the day. Um, and it, if that doesn't make you wonder if there's powers that be kind of playing these things, then it's, uh, there's not much else that will, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you think. I agree or am I just chatting complete nonsense here? <laughs> I love it. I'm so about it, man. You got to be ready to go, like, kicking some doors and hug somebody. Like some, I'm going to go find the most racist person. Like, anyone with a rebel flag in the yard, I'm going to stop and knock on the door and ask them for a cup of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, do you still get a lot of, uh, you know, kind of, um, uh, do you get a lot of racism now in this area or is it kind of something that... Oh, it's it's uh, it's it's there, it's here, and I see it every once in a while, but not nearly the way it was when I was younger, man. But I'm not sure if that's because I'm I'm older, I've been in prison a couple of times, I have tattoos and a beard now. I would or, <laughs> or if it's because maybe there's actually something changing, but, you know, I think it's just, it's 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 in the dark now, like. Um, you we live in you live in a bigger town now. Like yeah, it's, it's a little bit more diverse. Yeah. And well, I mean, helps, but, um, after even even after I was uh I got a little older, and could take up for myself, you know, people kind of kind of slow. You. I mean, that's it. If you face you know if you face someone that's that's uh, angry for no reason and you just kind of smile at him, man. Like I think it's I don't I don't know. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. But I think I think if you just try to love someone regardless of who they are, just because they're a human being, that I think that goes a long way in this situation. You know? On yeah. both sides, on both sides is the thing. You know? Yeah, that, and it's um, something I w- I commented on on a, on a on a post earlier. So there's this thing on Facebook that's going around. It's like uh, delete these people in your friends list, and it goes to a link and you click the link and it's all your friends who like donald trump's page and it's funny <laughs> um but at the same time it's like, I've, no I've, seen, I've seen so many people going right if you you know if you like donald trump or if you like this delete me delete me delete me and it's like i can definitely see where they're coming from but i think in the long run we need to be listening to these people and going you know like why are they why are they siding towards these people because change is only going to happen once it's accepted we and we can't yeah, you can't force that change on people who are unwilling to listen. And if we're not willing to listen to the other side, then they're not going to be willing to listen to us. And it's, I think on Facebook and Twitter, you, you, you definitely see that where everything's just like one person shouting and the other person shouting and no one's actually reading what the other person's got to say. And until we kind of accept that and try and push past it, then I don't really see much change happening. we got to listen to each other. And- and also, if if I get rid of you because I don't like the way you think, what's to you know? Why should I think that you would want to listen to me? <laughs> right, you <know>? right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like I, you just you can't expect people to listen to you if you're not willing to. You listen yourself, you know? right? Right, yeah. It's 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 a it's a full circle, man. So there's hope. We've established the issue, and now we've just got to. Uh, hopefully get it out there and get people to listen that's it man that's what we're shooting for Good. hoping like hell <laughs> so what's uh what's next for you guys then is it all are you solely preparing for the festival are you preparing for a release as well now like what's the uh what's the next stage are you just gonna see what the world offers well i think right after we get we finish talking to you we're gonna get this kid some clothes on we're gonna grab the tent and we're going to drive to Buchanan and go camp at my favorite spot, man, that we haven't been to in years. <laughs> just get out in the woods. I think it was spontaneous. We're just going to go, get some beers, some firewood, turn our phones off, <laughs> go see my little brother and see if they want to come. And if not, then it'll just be the three of us and the dog. And we're going to go camp. We're going to the woods, man. <laughs> and then we're going to go have this record release. 
Nice. And we don't uh, have a date set. We don't have a date set yet, though. For, right, yeah. <laughs> Keep it a surprise. That's that's good. I think the yeah. cabin, uh, that's all I want to do sometimes. I just think our oh, life would be so much easier if I just left a note saying I'm off, see you later, find this, ca- build a cabin in the woods in the middle of nowhere and then just be, you know, years down the line, people people would refer to me as the crazy old guy who lives in the forest. I like, don't go there. There's some crazy old guy. <laughs> That'd be me one day. <laughs> Life would be a lot simpler. Oh my God, it'd be so much easier. When you get tired of loving everybody as hard as you can and just you can escape. <laughs> just like, right. I've loved all love- I can love today. Yeah, we have loved the shit out of everyone for so long because we're going to the woods and secluded. <laughs> if I see one camper, I'm going to lose my whole walnuts. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, you going there for the whole weekend or just the night? So do you get do you do a lot of writing in the in the cabin? Or? Uh, well, we're probably just going to pitch a tent. I'm going to take a – that's probably something we will do because I want to be able to have a fire. And it's been a long time since I've been able to set beside a campfire with – this is completely spontaneous. We haven't really literally planned it haven't out. planned it. We're gonna grab it. <laughs> We've actually never never done it together before. So yeah. um, we're we're about to find out how we do together. In the oh, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> It'll be fun. I'm great at this. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit worried now. There's a lot of, there's a, suddenly, there's a lot of pressure on this trip. Uh, I think I'm going to stop promoting it. Or, or I may have sold it to you now, and then the disaster happens. Oh, it's, so- it's, it's not my fault. <laughs> um, are you guys got any plans to come over here to the UK then? Man, listen, we probably would have already been over there if I hadn't been in so much trouble. You know? I know we would have. There are a few places that have already been hollering at us to come over and uh, play some shows. We could have, we probably could have booked a tour over there by now if, if I could just get my passport, man. Like, but I was in so much trouble growing up, man, just because, and I swear it was, I just felt so, uh, I just felt so alone growing up, man, because no one understood what I was going through. No one got looked at the way I got looked at, where I was at. It went in actuality, ever, a lot of people were getting, but why I didn't know, I thought I was, you know what I mean? I mean, I was literally the only biracial person, the only black kid in uh, in school. There was uh, one other little dude that was just crazy. It, are these issues that are systematic or is it just purely circumstantial or is it is it a bigger issue than that? I, re- I mean, I think a little bit. All, I mean, I think all of the above, actually. Because it's in, you know, I mean, it's systematic. Is it? I mean, it's easy. You can see it everywhere. You know, I mean, it's not hard. If you actually know know what it is, it's not hard to spot. I grew up in a different town, um, mm-hmm. and even here, much, much, you know, in a different place. It was. I don't know how old I was before I met the first person who was not white, um, and um, it, I think it was probably. And then from stories that I've heard from people recently that I grew up with, but um, I think that was just as bad where I was, I think. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, it was just predominantly white where I was at. And naturally, some of the kids that had no idea like why this chocolate man was walking mm-hmm. around their, their town, like they had never seen me and they were so they were afraid of me or they were intimidated, you know, they were afraid of what we don't understand i guess and, and and kids can be vicious kids can be so ruthless man. yeah because it's, it's an age where you don't understand the power of words and it's um you know a joke seems harmless it you know it gets you you, you you say a joke at someone's expense it gets a couple of laughs and he's like oh, it's all good it's just a joke but you know there's underlying roots where that joke come from and then the older you get you know the the slightly more vicious that joke becomes and then it be, yeah. you know for for a lot of people it becomes more than a joke it becomes as when you add in media to, um bias into that it it becomes a mindset and then all of a sudden it almost becomes your identity there's a lot of people who rely so whose sole purpose it seems is to kind of stir up that hatred of, of other people and it's uh, and it all starts at, you know by making a harmless joke at someone who's different to you when you're a kid and that's why it's so important i think to, to that schools pay play a lot more of a part in that kind of racial understanding man i swear that's what it was all the kids that used to mess with me when i was younger man grew up with big i grew up with them and these, some of these dudes that used to beat, I mean, they would beat, 
beat me to death. <laughs> they hurt me, man, a bunch of times. They message me still today, just wanting my attention. Like they just want to talk and they want to like talk about where they're. I don't. I think it's because they feel bad gen genuinely about their ignorance when they were kids. You know what I mean? So I reply as often as I can because they're growing and they don't even realize they're growing. You know. So so who would I be? to ignore these people that are trying to make a right and trying to like have some compassion for someone that they had none for to begin with. That's so good. try to reply and try to reach out as much as they can, man, to those dudes. If they, if they have shown any kind of, any kind of growth, you know, I try. I just feel like I have to try to reciprocate some kind of love or some sort of form of correspondence to let them know that I understand and, you know what's funny that I never really thought about it until this second. Um, that that my real ex first ex not first but but my real exposure to start seeing a lot more people of different um, different ethnicities and everything was when I went to college, which happened to be the town that he grew mm -hmm. up in. So it's funny that my, mm -hmm. that I started becoming more aware of things when I went to because you were in the college, yeah, yeah. the school, and of course the school had. But I'm living out in the woods yeah. of the, you know, and she's in the in the in the town where the college is, and they're all, and it's, you know, the whole town's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's insane, right? And it wasn't a terribly diverse campus, but it was definitely a lot more diverse. Than yeah, the, rest of the town was. <laughs> oh yeah, Jeez Louise, and and I kind of feel bad for some of those college kids because I know that they have experienced that firsthand in my, you know, in the town I grew up in. Just it's it's crazy. Yeah, I think it definitely makes a huge, uh, the world of a difference kind of step in, like if you've grown up in one place, as soon as you go to another place and experience other people and uh, other cultures, it, you, you definitely come back with a lot more uh, understanding and appreciation. I think so many people kind of, you know, just don't have, they, they, they're afraid of experiencing or understanding other other cultures and ultimately every person regardless of you know your race or gender or anything we're just trying to weave through the crazy path of uh, of life and we're all trying to get on with it ourselves and it comes back to what we said about musicians like, like everything would be a lot easier if we just helped each other you know and not have all these uh, roadblocks in the way that you know life how how happy life would be if we just kind of just go on it's not hard kids do that's it, it man it's, it's not bro. it really isn't man. It's, in fact it's easier and you're right and, and it's not just for musicians it's for right, all that was perfect yeah that was that was well put man. i need to write, write that down <laughs> <laughs> i feel like we should be holding hands and uh, singing around the campfire right now. Once away, right? <laughs> let's all just get along let's i mean it's so really good. though that's it that's what it comes down to if you keep them up and go you're wasting so much energy with this hate. <laughs> well, I've already lost. I'm losing a lot of hair through stress, and it's uh, so it's one stress I could do without is other people getting on <laughs> each other. My hairline oh, needs yeah, it. Well, so bald. <laughs> <laughs> but you pull it off. I'm just gonna look like an egg when I make the. Uh, <laughs> the <thing. laughs> That's why I'm growing the beard. Just turn my yeah, head upside bro. down. <laughs> right. <laughs> Have a bro. Yeah. Strategic use of hats and the. Uh, yeah. Oh, I do. <laughs> Hat placement. <laughs> uh, so for for everyone listening, if they want to check out your music, uh, what where can they go? I'm going to throw some links below. Uh, but you're on Facebook. Uh, you've got music coming out soon. Um, what could, did you just want to give your uh, Facebook link a uh, a shout now? We have um, a website, which is WalterDeBarMusic.com, and the Facebook page and the Instagram page are both um, at Walter DeBar Music. Um, we also have the, the Facebook page, The Little Blue Hearts. Oh, yeah. That's it. And, uh, <laughs> and an Instagram for that as and well. And if they want to find uh, the music that we have, have released already, man, it's on any of the major platforms. People Play, Walter Spotify. DeBar, We Fall, We Break. It's my first record. It's a little six-song EP. And uh, we'll be releasing a single pretty soon. We really hope you guys check it out. It's, it's uh, this is I'm so excited about this song, man. It's something special. I want to hear. I, I want 
I want to hear it. Please. I can't wait for you to hear it, man. <laughs> I, I really wait for you to hear it. I'm so excited. <laughs> and uh, for people who are interested in checking out the uh, the Folk Festival live stream, uh, that's all going to be on Facebook? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be on Facebook, the Appalachian Folk Festival live stream. Yeah, that's and, what the event is called. Mm-hmm. And there's a page where we've kept all the events that are Appalachian Folk Online Music Festival, mm-hmm. I think is what the page is called. Um, so, oh, but you can find it. It's at Appalachian Folk Festival, facebook.com slash Appalachian Folk Festival. That's um, where you can find that page and the event will be on there. And that's the, and the tw- 20th of June, that's 12 p.m. American Eastern time? Yes. Yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> <laughs> too many time zones. And that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be 4 p.m. Uh, or 5 p.m. UK time. Yeah, okay, cool. Five o'clock, and yeah. Five. That'll that'll be that'll be when your guys that'll be when you guys play. And yep. you set it off, and and all the sets will be right there on the um on the event page. We'll just post all the live streams there. And it's a fantastic lineup, so uh, do check it out. Oh my it's god, the one that they do is generally world class lineup. Um, so it really is, man. This lineup is something special. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you guys on it too. That, we're we're excited for this one, like. Mm-hmm. Oh, th- thank you very much for having us on and thanks so much guys for uh, lending me your time having a chat about everything it's been a, a joy to, to speak to you both face to face it's so. been great to talk thank to you, you man so yeah this it's has been, been really great. cool yeah. and uh, we definitely yeah. definitely have to have you back on again and hopefully we'll see you guys in the UK or over in the States as well we'll, we'll, uh, we'll definitely take a, a rain check on that um, I am pretty envious of your, your day's plans now go into the woods i'll be <laughs> trudging <laughs> through the rain back home whilst you guys are uh, swanning off to a campfire so enjoy that have a marshmallow on me yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much richard oh, man not a boy it's been an absolute pleasure thank you guys both and uh, take care take thank care you man too. thank you man. Your soul and the world will use it.